What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames. New episodes every Sunday. I have not read this. This is still... I saw that he posted it and I said, you know what? I'll save it for... I'll save it for the video. So get, get a live reaction from Raja. <laughs> Man, dude, this is just. Uh... Anyways, let's get this started. So, Johnny Goudreau has finally sent out a message addressing Flames fans via the Players Tribune. I haven't read this yet. Noah has. So, this is my first time reading it. So you're getting a raw reaction for, you know, for those of you who, you know, like that sort of thing. (laughs) Um, Alrighty, let's get this started. If I start crying, uh, don't try to stop me. Um, Okay. To my Flames family, I hope you can understand my decision more after reading this letter. I appreciate how much you wanted me to stay, and I hope you can see how hard this decision was for me. Before I was a hockey player, I was a hockey fan. I totally get it. It's not, it's hard not to see any free agency decision as a betrayal. All I would ask though, is for people to hear me out as a human being. Last week, I kept thinking about the conversation I had with my parents toward the end of my junior year at Boston college. I had the option to stay at BC and become a free agent and sign with any NHL team the following year or report to the flames. But all I wanted was to be a Calgary flame. I felt that I owed it to the organization who took a chance on a 5'6", 130-pound forward from the USHL. I wanted to show them that I could be the player they believed I could be. When I was drafted in 2011, I honestly couldn't point out Calgary on a map. I knew about Iggy and the red jerseys, and that was really it. But I learned quickly about what it meant to play for this city. I couldn't believe the comments from people asking me to sign and become a flame right away. Johnny, please sign. Will you play for us next year? Did you sign yet? Just to preface this, that was 14-year-old me when I got in. (laughs) When I went up to Calgary for development camps, I saw how deep a connection the people had to their hockey team, even just for games made up of prospects. We'd get so many fans at the rink. The city is awesome. I thought to myself, this is a hockey city. Ever since those early days, I've understood. Hockey in Calgary is just different. It's a special place with great people. For pretty much my whole life, I've been obsessed with the game of hockey and with getting better at it. I've worked my tail off every summer to come back better than before. I've always believed that hard work can get you anywhere in this sport. But as much as I love hockey, family is everything to me. The most important connection I have. And a few years ago, I think I started to realize how much you sacrifice when you give 100% to your career. I felt like I needed to do more to center my family in my life after we experienced some hard times. My dad's heart attack in 2018 was a big moment for that. It was really so bad, and he's lucky to be here today. A very scary situation. And seeing him in that hospital bed, it hit me extremely hard. I thought about how little I'd seen my parents since I'd been in the league. These moments and experiences change you as a person. And just to preface this, do you remember how doom and gloom that stretch was at the end of the 17-18 season? Yeah, Johnny left for personal reasons. Monaghan was shut down for the rest of the year. Kachuk had a concussion. It was like Matt Stajan was our top line center man. Like, <laughs> insane. Like, yeah, was, that, 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 yeah, that was a dark, dark time. That was one of the worst weeks I think I've ever like seen. Right. Yeah. Um. Again, like just I'm like I vividly remember that situation, and I'm very glad that he's okay because he's a beauty. Yes, yeah. Uh, that's just scary. Um, and I mean, I understand that feeling. Like I've experienced it a few times in terms of yeah. you know, people that I know. So it's not something that should be taken for granted. That's for sure. Or yeah. even spoken less of in that manner. Mm-hmm. Another big moment for me when was when I met Meredith. After my dad's heart attack, I bought a vacation home in hopes that my family could spend time together and to have a place for my dad to relax more after we nearly lost him forever. And that's how we met. Meredith was my next door neighbor. That's insane. I did not know that. (laughs) Um, 
I was so blown away by the work that she was doing. And over the course of our relationship, I've learned a lot about her, about how to balance those two things, a passion for your work with a passion for the people in your life. I've learned a lot about the person I want to be, which is a good son, a good husband, and soon a good father. And in the end, trying to find this balance is what this decision came to. As much as we both love Calgary, I think Meredith and I just felt it was going to be very hard to continue living as far away from our families as we've been living, especially as we're starting a family of our own soon. It's the, it's the toughest decision we've ever had to make. I want to set the record straight on a few things I've heard over the last week. I've heard people say that I was using Calgary for leverage and that I always knew I was leaving. I've heard people say that with the kind of money I'm making and with how easy it is to hop on a plane, location shouldn't be an issue. And while I normally wouldn't give that stuff the time of day, I feel like I owe it to Flames fans, to be honest. For what it's worth, I didn't know for sure what I wanted to do until the last hours of the last day. Man, even after I turned down the eight-year deal from Calgary, I still thought about going back and trying to work on a seven-year deal to stay. It was all on the table for the entire process. Maybe that seems messy, but life is messy, you know? And as for hopping on a plane and all of that, I'm incredibly grateful to be an NHL player and to be making the salary that I make. I don't take it for granted for a second, which contributes to why money was not the main deciding factor for me. But the idea that Meredith and I can just fly to and from home or have our loved ones visit no problem because we have money, it's not that simple. Our families still work full time. Our siblings have their own lives. Our nieces and nephews are in school. It's a tough trip for folks to make. And it's only gotten tougher with the pandemic. And it's hard for us to get out east as well. It's things like missing your grandfather's funeral or having very sick relatives that make the distance so painful. And you remember that feeling when planning out your future for your family. I know those answers aren't going to please everyone, just like I know my decision didn't. But all I can do here is tell the truth. And this is the truth. I promise. I cherish the time I spent in Calgary. For a long time, Meredith and I saw our future there. We wanted to re-sign last summer. We were looking at homes to start a family, but it just didn't work out, and we thought this summer might be different. But that doesn't change the way I feel right now. I'm so proud to have been on this team and to have represented this city. In these last few weeks, I've been struggling every time I think about that. Hmm. <clears throat> All of the relationships we've built here, all the amazing friendships we have, I could feel those in my chest every time I thought about leaving. And it's weird, you know, I've been thinking about what it's going to be like when I come back next season. I know there will probably be booze, but as strange as it might sound, I'm still really excited to come back and play in front of some very passionate fans. That's why I love this city and the people. They love their team. I've got so much love for my time as a flame. No amount of booze or angry messages is ever going to change that for me. One day, Meredith and I hope to bring our family back to Calgary to show them all of our favorite spots and things to do, like Banff and the Stampede, especially the Saddle Dome. I know stuff like this is what every player tells a fan base when they leave. But it's like I said, my story isn't the story of every player. Not every player was a 5'6", 130-pound USA cheller when one of the most NHL's when one of the NHL's most storied franchises took a chance on him. I felt like the luckiest guy in hockey when that happened, and I still do. I hope the people of Calgary can remember me not only as a hockey player, but also as a good person with good values. Thank you for supporting me over these years and for making my family a part of yours. I feel so grateful to have been brought up in the Calgary Flames organization. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Johnny. This dude was about to sign last summer, man, and it's yeah. not God's fault, right? Nope. That's like, uh, that was, that was deep. <laughs> that was, yeah. No wonder it took him, took him a while to post this. Um, yeah. But I mean, like, that's all I was asking for all along was just for him to come out and address. Me too. The flames. And the way he went about it was great. I mean, it's a really good article. I mean. Like. You know, after like sitting, like after we recorded the first video on our like immediate thoughts, like the more I like sit down with the whole thing, the more it's like, okay, like. 
I blame Brad more than I blame Johnny. I still think that the way that it happened, the fact that a decision from his camp didn't come sooner, the fact that it came out of a position of love, though, I don't know how I feel about that because it's one of those things where it's like you're not trying to screw the franchise and their fans and, you know, the direction of the organization – but you somehow did so out of love, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like the reason why it went up to the last day was because he genuinely kept pondering whether or not he wanted to say. It's not like he had his mind made up. It literally came down to the last hour. And I don't know, man. Like you've got to be like some next level psycho to just immediately turn on the guy after he was the the reason your franchise was relevant for the last eight years. Yeah. Um, And like, you can't just turn on a guy after all the memories he gives you, you can hate the way his decision was handled, which I'll probably never get over, but I'm never going to hate Johnny Goudreau, man. I think anyone who hates anybody for doing something for family reasons, like you weren't loved as a child. Like, Yeah. yeah, like that's where I'm at with it. I personally, I'm not booing him. When he comes back, when we referenced it in like the previous video, I said, there are people in the city who are going to boo him. It's just going to happen. And oh, yeah. by, you and know, he, he uh, says it in the article too. Like yeah. he knows he's going to get booed when he comes back here. Personally, I'm not going to boo him. I'll probably, I'm going to go to that game and I'll record the reaction and probably vlog it for the channel. Cause why not? But me personally, I'm not going to contribute to those boos because I think that, yes, it's hard. Like, to me, I feel like this is just Brad True Living's mess more than it is Johnny Goudreau being a snake or Johnny Goudreau, oh my God, he just he knew he was leaving the whole time. Oh, tampering and all this. Anyone accusing the guy of tampering, he signed in Columbus for fuck's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you, there, there's no none of that yeah. is logical. If you if like, you want to boo anybody, boo Brad for living. That's no, where I'm boo Johnny that's where I'm, at. that's where I'm at. He let it get to this point, man. He yeah. let it get to this point. Yeah. And I mean, after sitting on it, it's not like it hurts any less. He's not a flame. It's just you understand more that this isn't a Tavares like situation. In, from an objective business standpoint, it sure seems like it, but I don't think there was any real – There, you can clearly tell there was no ill intent. And Johnny Goudreau is a very shy guy. He's not a guy that's going to put himself out there. He's very much a yes man. And yeah. if you can get the yes man to stay with – the lack of incompetence that your management group has had the last three plus years. And yes, I understand that the flames did everything they could and that it was at the end of the day, his decision, but that doesn't warrant the whole, Oh, I was actually going to sign, you know, last summer, the summer prior and uh, you yeah. know, everything to bed. Right. That falls on Brad. That doesn't fall on Johnny. No. Johnny exercised the right that was available to him. And in the yeah. sports world, you get dumped. Yeah. Well, like, it's a good thing we're not NBA fans because yeah, no, exactly. Like every star player cycles around that entire league, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's brutal. And like, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I, all the best to him, I guess. And, you know, like, you can't just replace eight years of memories and turn on a guy. It's not, you no, have to yeah. be like, the Joker's like nephew to, you know, even contemplate that. Yeah. And, and I understand that the fan base reaction is going to be very mixed, but I'm just explaining, I think where I'm at in that I don't, I will never, ever, ever hate Johnny Goudreau. I will hate the way that this was handled by management. And I will hate the way that our team is, probably going to fall apart on account of this decision being made and it's already in the process of doing so like we just posted our kachuk rant you know and like i just i don't know man 
it put the organization in a very hard spot, but it's also the organization's fault for letting it get to that point. Exactly. It's a little bit of both sides, right? I mean, it is. It's, just, it's just a shitty, shitty situation that yeah. the Flames, Goudreau, management, everybody fell into. Like, again, you think that Johnny Goudreau's winning here? He's not. He's going to Columbus. Yeah. Like, the Flames lost, Goudreau lost, Louis Gross lost. Just keep in mind, agents get, you know, a little cheddar cheese for their effort whenever yeah. the client signs a deal. Yeah. And, like, the only real winner here is Meredith. <laughs> literally. Literally the only winner out of this whole situation. Like, I just, <laughs> like, oh, man. Just, this is so sad. I... It's a new era of Flames hockey. It all depends on the type of moves they're going to make and what they decide on doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Johnny, all the best. Again, last time we recorded, we were in a different place, I would say. We weren't bashing Goudreau. Just to preface, none of that past video was us bashing Johnny Goudreau. It was us making sense of the situation more than it was us being, ah, oh, Johnny Goudreau, you're dead to me. Because no one with a soul would do that. There's I, cycles of, gr- of grief, right? Oh, yeah. Like, like we, were, we were 100% anger. The last yeah, oh, yeah. We ago. recorded that video in the anger stage, for and sure. And now we're just in acceptance. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, – I've begun the denial stage with Matthew Kachuk, but that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But we'll oh. save that. We'll save that one, and uh, hopefully, yeah. we don't have to go anywhere, anywhere past the denial stage. Yeah, but um, all I know is I'm gonna make it every with every ounce of I'm gonna make every ounce of effort to see Johnny Goudreau on January 23rd. I want to yep. record that, and I want to see what kind of reception he's going to get, and I think he wants. Yeah. See what kind of reception he's gonna get yeah right and like it's just this is what happens when your general manager isn't in tune with his players yeah he should have took a drug golfing he should have gone out done everything he could like what normal gms do you see what kyle dubas does for his players my god like there's yeah. when you're out of when you're out of touch with your franchise players, this is what happens. And this is what ends up happening, no matter what kind of success you're going to have. And I guess we'll just have to sit and wait for the ripple effect for what's going to come out of all of this. And in the meantime, you know, like I, I can't, I can't hate Johnny Goudreau, dude. I like, it's just not in me. Um, and Yeah. Like Noah said, you go through different stages of grief. You go back and you watch our video from six days ago. It's a much different tone than it is now. We were more yeah. so angry about how the situation all went down. Now we're, we've just accepted that it happened. And there's really not much more we can say or do, except hopefully see what kind of welcome Johnny gets. And if you, whether you're going to cheer him or boo him, we understand. Yeah, but everybody's yeah, everybody's entitled to their own their own exactly. opinion. And- exactly, everyone's entitled to their own method of grievance. <laughs> I, I I'm not going to judge you for your decision, but yeah, it was a, a great eight years of yep. watching Johnny Gaudreau. Dude, like the game seven, man, like that just two months ago, like that was one of the best nights of my life. Like, yeah, I. Man, it's just – it's sad that it's ending this way. And I understand it from Goudreau's side, and I hate it from management side. Yeah. And it is what it is. These are the cards we're dealt, and this is where we're at as fans of the Calgary Flames. So if you're also a fan of the Calgary Flames, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Help us grovel in our sorrow. And we'll catch you later. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody.